I am not the biggest Star Wars fan. Never have been. That's a lie, I have been. I was very big into Star Wars The Clone Wars when that came out, and like most people who had a childhood, I also sunk countless hours into the Lego games. But when I got to high school, I lost that hyperfixation, and by the time the sequel trilogy started, I only really had a vague interest in it, in the sense that it was a big pop culture thing that everyone knew about. I saw The Force Awakens in a cinema months after it came out, I saw The Last Jedi during a nine hour flight, and I've yet to see a second of The Rise of Skywalker outside of trailers and random moments from reviews and memes. Somehow Palpatine returned. <laughs> At this point, I'm more likely to see the Lego version before the actual film. By this point, any lingering enthusiasm for Star Wars is gone, bolstered by my growing cynicism towards franchise films. It's now another Fast and Furious, a Mission Impossible, MCU, an aspect of pop culture that I'll just feel the impact of from afar without actually engaging in it. Yeah, the Mandalorian looks alright, Baby Yoda is cute, I'm sure it's good, but I don't care. Obi-Wan prequel? I'm good. Maybe at some point I'll rewatch Clone Wars, but I really don't care enough to keep up with anything new. And that would have been my mindset going forward, were it not for one little announcement. Okay, Disney. Alright, Disney. You win this round. Now, I, being the absolute weeb degenerate that I am, was naturally drawn to this new project due to the pure fact that it was an anime. Sad, I know. But then I got to thinking, and I realised that visions represent something more than just anime becoming more mainstream in the West. No, there's far more for me to say about this than that. The reason I decided to make this video is because A. There's the opportunity to ride two constantly trending topics. B. There's the opportunity to ride to constantly trending topics. C. There's the opportunity to ride one minute thirty seven seconds later to constantly trending topics. And V. Because as a former Star Wars fan, I see potential in visions to make me care about the franchise again, and not just because it's anime. And so, without any further ado, allow me to explain why visions should be the shot in the arm that Star Wars needs. Star Wars has a nostalgia problem, or at least mainstream Star Wars does. For a few years now, Star Wars has been shackled by the burden of its history. It's what ultimately killed the promise of the sequel trilogy, and unless rectified, could lead to the franchise itself becoming stagnant. I think it is safe to say at this point that, regardless of your feelings on The Last Jedi as a film, had its sequel continued in the direction it set up, we would have ended up with a much more original, satisfying film that felt more unique to this trilogy's modern characters and themes. But, probably due to backlash from certain parts of the fandom, Disney it seems instead chose a more reactionary approach. Turning film 9 into a two hour long nostalgia fest that had never been properly foreshadowed, was stuffed to the brim with all kinds of arse pulls, and left the sequel trilogy's themes and characters in the dust in favour of callbacks. Coming off the heels of a film that was explicitly about the need to move on from the past and face the future, this one just feels like a slap in the face. Kylo Ren's taped together mask, barely held together, feels like a metaphor for the film. Taking what should be buried and learnt from and trying to force it into its original shape when it no longer has the same meaning, the same weight, the same gravitas. It's my opinion that Star Wars is at risk of becoming too much about Star Wars, which sounds weird, but let me explain what I mean. The Rise of Skywalker showed a Star Wars that was less about telling original stories within a shared universe, one brimming with lore and potential in its past and future, and instead one focused on giving 40-year-old fans callbacks to point at. 
Its worth was centred around Star Wars itself having intrinsic value, not around it being a good film on its own. And not that those callbacks don't have their places, but, well, everything ages. And while Star Wars might be pulling in the billions now, it won't mean much to the generations of the future, distant from iconic moments of old, unless it embraces change. And with the Skywalker saga of films over, it looks like someone over at Disney might have just clocked that. Visions is the most fun I've had watching Star Wars since the original airing of the Clone Wars show, bridging something I used to love with something I presently love to create a fantastic experience. And let's say this first, Visions is, when detached from the wider context of the franchise, just a fucking good anthology series. Across the nine short films, you'll see a variety of stories told with incredibly diverse direction, animation, acting, writing, and style. If one doesn't suit your tastes, then there's bound to be another that will. Even if you aren't into Star Wars or even anime, I would highly recommend checking it out. In fact, I think it's entirely possible to enjoy them even if you haven't heard of Star Wars at all. Just pretend they all take place at multiple points in this mysterious science fantasy world with vaguely hinted at lore of separatists and empires and Sith and Jedi and it works great. I might even prefer it that way. There's a lot I could say about this anthology in a standard analysis. Reviewing each special, the creative process, behind the project, the fact that Japanese-influenced media is being returned to Japan. An observation I stole from Hissy Hey, check them out. And if you'd like to see that, then like, subscribe, and say so in the comments. But the focus on this video is simply on why Visions, and to an extent shows like The Mandalorian, are what Star Wars needs right now. Star Wars isn't done with its history, what with projects like the Obi-Wan miniseries in the pipeline. But, with a new trilogy helmed by Ryan Johnson focusing on new characters in a different era, and rumours of media set during the period of the High Republic, whatever that means, it makes me hopeful that Visions isn't just going to be a quirky little spin-off. It's going to set a precedent of moving on to different things. I've been mentioning moving forward a lot, and I should probably clarify that I don't just mean stories set in the future of the Star Wars universe, though I would like that. Many of Vision's short films take place during the same time period as the films after all. By moving on, I mean finally leaving the Skywalker saga to rest. Whether that's by moving on into the future, or driving back to the past, let's leave Anakin, Luke, Obi-Wan, Yoda, the Clone Wars, this story, this family, these characters. Let it form part of history, so we can finally learn and move on. I'd like to say that franchises can't survive without adaptation, change, or evolution, but I honestly don't know if that's true. After all, look at all the franchise films thriving today. They only exist because they are consistently successful, thus discouraging innovation. But you can only blow a bubble so much before it bursts, and I'd like to believe that while these franchises might be successful now, audiences will eventually tire of the constant reiterations and sequels. And though Star Wars Visions is unlikely to reach mainstream appeal, I can only hope that it represents a new era for blockbuster franchises. One where they don't act as prisons, forcing filmmakers down a set path, but a sandbox. One they can roam freely in, allowed to use the toys within however they see fit. Yeah, we can only hope indeed. Thank you for watching. As always, I'll have a director's commentary up on Patreon soon. Check that out if you're interested and want to support what I do. Otherwise, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Assuming this cough doesn't kill me. Bye bye.